Hi, welcome. So in this video, we're going to go through some examples of doing integrals with u substitution. And then I have another video where we do some more complicated u substitution problems to build on these ones. So to start, I just want to go over the steps that we do in order to use u substitution. And I'll have these steps throughout the video to help us out. So the first step is to identify the inside function g of x and let u be equal to g of x. Then we find the derivative of g, whatever we picked for our u, so that we have what our du is equal to. Then we substitute u and du into the integral so that we don't have any more of the original variable left, we just have things in terms of u. Next, we evaluate our integral, which should be a little simpler now. And then to finish off the problem, we're gonna replace u with g of x to get back to the original variable. Okay, let's look at what this looks like in practice. So let's say I want to do the integral of x minus 10 to the fifth dx. So before we go too far, why don't you pause and see if you can determine what you think u should be here, and then try to find du by taking the derivative of u. So go ahead and try that out. All right, so I'm seeing here that we have the integral of something to the fifth power. So I'm going to let that something be my inside function, x minus 10. So u is equal to x minus 10. That's my first step, identifying the inside function. Then I wanna find the derivative of this u. So the derivative of x minus 10 is just one. And so I'm getting that du is equal to one times dx. That's my step two. Now, in my integral that I started with, I want to replace everything with my u's and my du. So x minus 10 is u, and the dx is just du. So I'm getting that I'm doing the integral of u to the fifth du. Now I have a new integral that is entirely in terms of u variables. There are no x variables left, and I can solve this integral. So the antiderivative of u to the fifth is 1 sixth u to the sixth, plus c, this is my step four, and I've now found the antiderivative. So to finally just wrap this problem up, I have to replace it back with the original variable. So u is equal to x minus 10, so I'm getting 1 sixth times x minus 10 to the sixth power plus c as my antiderivative. Now something that's just a good practice is when you get your final solution, just really quickly look at it and think, okay, what's the derivative of this? So you should see pretty quickly that that 6 comes in front and cancels with the 1 sixth, and then the power decreases by 1 to 5, and you're getting that x minus 10 to the 5th that we started with. So it's just good to check really quick and make sure that you're getting what you expected. Okay, let's try another example. Again, you can pause and see if you can figure out what u and du are. So here we're going to do the integral of 5e to the 5x dx. And you take a second, figure out what u and du might be. All right, so here I'm noticing that I have five times e to the something. So that power up there is probably what I need to choose for my u. If I had e to the u, I'd know what that antiderivative is. So I'd like to get rid of that five x and make it something easier. So I'm gonna let u be equal to 5x, and then when I take the derivative of u, I'm just getting 5 dx. So the derivative of 5x is five. So that's my steps one and two. I found u and I found du. So my next step is to substitute these values into my integral. So I'm noticing that I have that five out front of my e to the 5x. I'm just going to move it and have it closer to the dx. So I'm rewriting this as e to the 5x times 5 dx. Then my 5x is u, and my 5 dx is du. Not too bad, so I can just sort of collect the 5 dx together and replace it with du. Now I have an integral that is entirely in terms of u, and for step four, I can evaluate this now simple integral. So the antiderivative of e to the u is just e to the u plus c. 
To wrap it up, I have to replace u with what I initially picked it as, so I have e to the 5x plus c, and that's my final solution. Again, you can really quickly check to make sure this works as you thought it did. Take the derivative. The derivative of e to the 5x is e to the 5x times 5, and that's what we started with. Okay, so before we move on to our final example, I just want to say that when you've done u substitution for a while, it becomes sort of second nature to choose what u should be and then find du. But when you're first learning this, it can seem totally foreign to try to pick out what u is. So you'll get lots of practice on your own, hopefully, but here I'm just sort of showing you what the correct solution is and not really walking through that process of what we might do incorrectly. So it'll be good for you on your own to do some problems where you're doing it, trying to figure out what it is, and just be kind to yourself as you're doing that because it really does take a little bit of time to get more used to this process. Okay, so for our next example, let's do the integral of negative eight over three minus eight x dx. So go ahead, see if you can figure out what u is and then find its derivative, du. Okay, so here I'm gonna choose the thing with the x in it. So that whole denominator has an x in it. I'm going to choose that as my u. I know that when I take the derivative of it, the x is going to go away. So I wanna choose the thing with the x's in it as my u, or the thing with the most x's, I guess. So I'm gonna choose u is equal to three minus eight x. And then when I do the derivative of u, I'm getting negative eight dx. So for my third step, where I need to substitute these back into the integral, I can see right away that the denominator is u, but it might take a second to notice that that negative eight gets combined with the dx. So if it's easier for you, you can actually write it by moving that negative eight x off of the fraction and writing it next to the dx. So I really have one over three minus eight x times negative eight dx. Then the negative eight dx is my du, and I have one over u. Now I have an integral that is entirely in terms of u, and I can solve it just using u's. So the antiderivative of one over u for step four is the natural log of absolute value of u with my plus c. And to finish off the problem, I just need to replace u with three minus eight x. And I'm getting my final solution is the natural log of three minus eight x plus c with that three minus eight x in absolute value. Again, just remember when you get your final answer, you can try to take the derivative really quickly to make sure it's getting back to what you started with in the integral. So the derivative of natural log of three minus eight x is one over three minus eight x times negative eight, which is in fact what we started with. So just a good practice to take the derivative, especially if you're pretty fluent in derivatives, it won't be too hard to just take a second, do the derivative in your brain, make sure you're getting back to what you started with. Okay, that is it for this video. Just some first examples using u substitution to get you used to the idea and to give you some initial practice. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.